Wheatstone is known for its commitment to quality. Every individual device is thoroughly tested to ensure that it meets strict standards. But when their advanced audio over IP networking system, WheatNet IP, was recently redesigned, the situation called for more than just testing of the individual components. WheatNet IP is an intelligent network with pieces of that distributed intelligence in every network blade. With new Blade 3 hardware and software in the mix, there was only one way to be sure that a large system would behave and scale as expected. They had to build such a system, and in September of 2014, they did just that. September 22, 2014. This is the Wheatstone factory in New Bern, North Carolina. In this space, over the next few days, critical testing will take place. Wheatstone's audio over IP networking system, WheatNet IP, is being upgraded with a new series of network interfaces called Blade 3, as well as new software that supports these and adds advanced features. Bringing myriad new capabilities to an already powerful network, this is no small change. So in keeping with Wheatstone's policies, an all-up system test is called for, scaled to the size of a large broadcast facility. In the previous week, Wheatstone technicians built just such a system, installed on these temporary racks and tables as at least one of every conceivable component that might be part of a real-world WheatNet IP network. Now, a team of Wheatstone engineers ranging from software to support to commissioning to sales are coming together here. They've got a week to complete extensive, exhaustive testing. Their goal? Break it if they can. The idea behind this Blade Fest is to bring together all of the components of our WheatNet IP system. Uh, the I.O. devices, control surfaces, uh, automation PCs, our, our meter app and um, screen builder app, talent stations, all of the devices that we've created to work together in this new environment with our Blade 3 release to make sure that everything works properly together. One of the earliest issues the team tackles is developing a way to route signal through the system in such a way that it can be easily monitored and traced. To do that, engineer Kelly Parker uses the Wheaton and IP Navigator software to route audio sequentially through every blade, processor, and control surface in the network. A salvo is written to make all of these signal connections again quickly and automatically at the press of a button in case they are for some reason disrupted. Next, Kelly builds a metering screen using Wheatstone's IP metering application. Signal at each component in the system is given its own individual meter to assist in troubleshooting any breaks in the chain. While that and other preparations are in progress, software engineers work to correct any already known bugs in the new software prior to the start of testing. I am working on the PC driver. Okay. The guy who acts like a blade, but it's running on a PC. Finally, with all the software ready and everyone present, the real tests can begin. One of the first things to test was system restarts. Most broadcast facilities have redundant power systems, of course, but good disaster planning dictates that we always plan for those systems to fail as well. How well would the new software recover from such a fault? How long would it take? At first, as with all first-line tests, the results were not quite optimal. Uh, this is going to be lots of great material for you guys to edit. Yeah. But uh, we want to take Dar Jar um, Dominic's build and make sure that it uh, not only reboots and finds the blades properly, but restores connections as well. Okay, there's the problem. <laughs> the transmit header for this guy happens to be EFC0FFF9, and the guy we're receiving is the same stream. Cool. <laughs> so, one of the two guys is mixed up on who you're supposed to be, where you're supposed to be transmitting. Right. But after some debugging, the blades in the system were reloaded with a new build of the software, one with all of its temporary debugging features removed. We want to make sure that it's an actual workable release and you didn't break anything in the process. We've got tightened up timing on some of the uh, uh, parameters and uh, we're going to test several test that a bunch of times to make sure it worked properly. After some tests and verifications of the Blade hardware itself, which is also new in this generation, the system is finally ready for the timing test. Okay, I'm going to reboot it. You want to, you want to time it? So is it still going to be the uh, 
same time as before, do you think? Yeah. Found it in the laundry she's in the back. Two minutes and eight seconds to reboot the entire system. Not bad, but the engineers are sure they can improve on that. Then do it again, it'll be faster, right? Okay. Oh, one minute and, not exact, about one minute and 50 seconds. It's, it's the, the B side. of the same one. Oh. It's the, the B mix. And with decent reboot times of just under a minute and a half for the blades, it's time for a full system reboot. Even the Cisco switches will be powered down to simulate a real power cut. You'll get your chance. Yeah, this is the switches taking off. Yeah. <laughs> they have to do their run-up, you know, before they take off. The results at first were not entirely encouraging, as the blades had a bit of an argument about who was the system master. Dominic, right there. Boom. That's what happens to the guy who's trying to make routes now? But thanks to the on-site software engineers, this problem too was quickly found and resolved. Should be done now. That's good to know. What we just accomplished, that was a ground zero power off on everything that we have here, including the switches, complete darkness, to a full recovery with no connection loss and everything working. Everything working. With reboot and timing tests complete, engineers begin to set up for what's called the pipeline or fracture test. Well, um, what we're trying to quantify is exactly how many audio channels can safely transport over a gigabit link including the audio and all the overhead associated with it. So we're segmenting our system into two big islands with a skinny little wire running between them. That's chunks already. There's one. Two. And last but not least. Okay. It's 112 roughly. 112 and we're at 60% saturation on that. There's, there's like hundreds. I mean, it's well over 200. Yeah. I think I lost. I think I lost count. I think I think I guessed at about 340 when I did like some calculations. Are you still adding connections? Yes. Because I have. I'm up to 332 groups at this point on that switch. After careful analysis of the data obtained from these tests, engineers determine that it's possible to transmit up to 462 Wheatnet IP signals over a single gigabit ethernet link, including all of the signaling, control, and data that travel along with those audio channels. I mean, it's, it's transmit right now. That switch over there is doing, if you look at transmit and receive package, it's doing somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 million packets. As testing draws to a close, those involved with the project seem very positive about the outcome. I think overall things went well. We made a lot of progress. I, I think we had a couple of surprises in the test, which is good. We always expect that in the testing, and I think we overcame those. Pretty happy with what we've seen so far. We've not come across any issues that uh, are showstoppers for us. We've proven that the system is performing as it should, and we have a reliable system here. The, the system performed well with the new hardware, the new software, and uh, we're off to a, a good start. It's interesting to see the system in action and trying to stress it and figure out ways that we can make things better and tune things up. I learned a lot from having Kelly there to show me what he does, because a lot of the time, I don't know, as a developer, I don't know how all these things are used, and most of the time it's, things are in pieces of my on desk, so it was good to see everything in, in, as a whole and how everything worked. We had a great week. You know, we brought together uh, the team that's been involved in uh, Blade since the beginning and put our new Blade 3 release through all sorts of testing and uh, what-ifs and uh, beat the heck out of it. And, getting it ready for final release. It, it worked great. 
know, we're happy with what we've what we've done, and uh, we'll be coming to uh, Blade near you soon.